<sighs> the Remarkable Mrs. Cox by Ewan Rose. Emily Cox in conversation with her late husband Lenny during the coronavirus lockdown. Part 12. Onions at number 7. Well, I have to say, Lenny, I met a right character today. In the garden her was, and sitting in my usual spot. Of course, her want to know, having just moved in like, but it was too hot to be taking prisoners if you catch me drift, mate. First appearances were not favourable, as you can well imagine. So, of course, I did what I did on the stall, when I spied someone about to tea leaf, I approached as noisily as I could, rattling me portable chair to announce me entrance. I had one of them big floppy garden hats on, pulled down over her eyes, and I was decked out in a pristine white embroidered smock. I was thinking mutton dressed up as lamb, yow am, madam. <clears throat> Despite the clatter, a day budge and eyelid so I just coughed to get her attention. Ahem! Ahem! Yes? Sorry to trouble you, Bab, but you am in me spot. I beg your pardon? Granted, Bab. Now I'd be grateful if you'd shift. I allus has me chair where you am under the tree, so our cops a bit of shade. Name? What? What's your name? Mrs Cox. Well... I don't see a nameplate saying Mrs Cox here, nor captain, or president, or chair. That's all I need. A new smart arse in the block. Don't worry. You stay where you am. I'll just pitch up here, keeping me social distance. That sounds an excellent idea. Valeria O'Nions. You mean onions? No, I don't. O'Nions. I knew a sour bones called Death once. Called himself D. Ath, as he'd get no patience if he was Dr. Death. So, just moved in, Mrs. O'Nions, I take it? Yes, I stayed most of the lockdown at the son's house in Barnt Green, but moved yesterday when they lifted the restrictions. Well, hope you ain't bought the pop with you. The pop? That's what I call it, the corona. As in the pop. <laughs> you mean COVID-19. Oh, no. Of course I remember that. Corona. Yes. <laughs> that and wagon wheels. What a witty one you are. Wagon wheels. Yes. <laughs> Did you say malaria? No, you know I didn't. I said malaria. But call me Val, please. Uh, what may I call you? Mrs Cox. Unless, of course, you'll swap places, then you can call me Emily. <sighs> As that great athlete and orator, Jonah Moth, once said, you learn how to be a gracious winner and an outstanding loser. Thank you kindly. <sighs> oh, that's better. Do you know that Joe chap personally, Valerian? No reason why you should, Hemily. He's an American rarity. Sounds like you am a bit of a clever class. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, do you read much? Oh, that's better. Nice bit of shade. Read? Murray? Course! Read Robinson Crusoe. That and the Bromsgrove Standard online. Oh, well done you. Not an easy read, that. What, the standard? <laughs> no, Defoe. I tell you what, though, Emily, I was actually thinking about H.G. Wells whilst dozing before you arrived. H.G. Wells? Him as wrote Mr. Polly. Read that, I have. Long time ago, mind. Can't remember, but I think it was when I was having our Jimmy and I had to rest up, which I day normally do. Carried on working with the other twelve, I did, but our Jimmy laid me up. Difficult babby he was. 
probably counts for him being a bit of a tear away. Any road, that's when I got to read Mr Polly, The Adventures of... Fascinating. Thirteen children. <laughs> you were a martyr for the cause, Emily. Ah, oh, it was The Adventures of Mr Potent with my late Leonard. <laughs> we are going to get on, Emily. I only have the one son. Uh, to be honest, I wanted more, but Rupert didn't. Rupert? Like the bear? <laughs> In name only, Rupert O'Neillens. More like Rupert Lamb. He was a kind and gentle man, but hated confrontation. Sounds like he'd have got on well with Mar Lenny. Rupert was an oilman. Mar Lenny was more of a spuds and collie man. <laughs> <laughs> All the better for it, I'm sure, Emily. <laughs> Um, but going back to H.G. Wells, he predicted lots of things like submarines, aeroplanes and even landing a man on the moon. Did he? Yes, but he also wrote this book called War of the Worlds. I'll send the film. Quite. Well. If you recall, it was a simple virus that killed off the Martian monsters that were harvesting us for fodder. They was? Yes, and I was daydreaming that maybe Covid-19, or the pop as you call it, will get weaker and weaker until it kills itself off. Hmm, you know that, that makes sense. More sense than than a load of them scientists I'm spouting. The blind leading the clueless. (laughs) 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 Oh, we did have a good laugh, Lenny. Been a while since I've had a crack like that. I like Val a lot, Lenny. Even if she am a bit la-di-da. But we're all equal under the shadow of the pop, ain't we? Must admit, I had a bit of a spring in me step after meeting Valeria Onions. <laughs> Night, Lenny. Love you, mate. The Remarkable Mrs. Cox Radio Show was a Ewan Rose Reviews production, starring Pat Dixon Dale as Emily Cox, Valeria Onions was played by Johanna Dobley, original music by Adrian Kimberlin, and the programme was produced by Phil Brown.